Today we are going to look at creating textures on Procreate, so that is our learning intention, our success criteria for today. I can import an image to Procreate, I can create new layers, I can add a grid to my canvas, I can use a range of brushes to show different textures for a lizard and a bird, I can annotate my drawings with potential physical materials, and I can import an image to, to emails, search hall one, show my homework, or your photograph library. The first thing we're going to do is add a grid to our canvas so we can see where the placement of our textures is going to be. So we're going to go to the paper clip section at the top, then we're going to go to add drawing guide. Once we're there, we'll see all of these options. So today we want a 3x4 grid so that we have 12 boxes in total, so we can have 12 different textures that we're going to create. So here I am just rearranging them so it takes up the most screen, making the thickness a little bit bigger so that I can see it the best when I go on to it. So first of all, selecting my colour in the top right hand corner. So I'm going to try and choose colours within the harmonies that we've looked at before. The aim of this first task is to experiment with at least 12 different brushes using lots of different colours to see which ones you like the best or get you the best results. Okay, so here I'm trying one from each different category. So try and get one from, you know, calligraphy, from the airbrushing one, the textures, all of these different ones. I've also done mine in different colours for each so that I can make my page look as vibrant as possible. Another thing you should focus on is try changing the size of the brush that you're using so that you can see what if you can create a different texture with a different size of brush. Another thing to have a look at is layering up the brushes. So you're going to be able to change the opacity depending on the type of brush that you're using. So for example, the charcoal brush you're able to build it up quite easily. Okay, so your goal is to have 12 different textures using 12 different brushes and 12 different colours. And that I'm going to just write textures at the top of my page so I remember what I was doing when I go back to in the future. Now we're going to have a look at exporting your image from Procreate rather than taking a screenshot as many of you have been doing. So if you go to the spanner in the top left hand corner and then beside canvas you'll see share so kind of this rectangle with an arrow pointing up. I've selected a JPEG image and I'm going to send this directly to myself. So you've got multiple choices. You can upload it directly to Satchel One, to your emails, to your OneDrive or to Teams. But I'm going to email it straight to myself. So just going to quickly type in my email here and then put the subject in. So week four on Procreate. So those of you who have me, Ms. Tarrant, as your teacher, please do this with your tasks that you upload from this week. If we were in school, this is what we would be making. So we'd be experimenting with creating different textures using a range of different materials. Okay, so we'd be using cut paper, milk cartons, magazines, fabric, tissue paper, and then annotating our drawing. So because we aren't in school, we're going to do this on Procreate instead. So on Satchel One, you should have a template of this lizard. You're going to save it to your files or your camera roll and then import it to your gallery. So I've already done that and now I'm renaming my layer. Okay, so we're just going to call this layer lizard and then we're going to make a second layer, which is going to be all of our textures. Okay, so just renaming this textures for just now. So the reason we're putting this underneath the lizard layer is so that regardless of what we do, we can always see the outline of our lizard. So I'm going to start at the top of my lizard and work my way down. Okay, so I've chosen my paintbrush and a green colour just to go with the lizard. I'm going to start to fill this in with as many different brushes as possible. 
Now, some of you had some questions about how to undo something. So you can either press the back button on the left hand side below the sliders, or you can double tap on your screen, as in tap with two fingers, and that will undo whatever you've done that you want to remove. So the important thing to remember is to think about how a lizard would feel. Okay, so how are you going to convey the way that a lizard would feel using all of these different brushes? So you can see I've just been filling this in kind of randomly so far, but another option is to put that grid back on your screen and fill in each box. So if you turn on the drawing guide, you'll get this option. I would make your grids quite big so that you don't have to fill in millions of boxes depending on how dedicated you are to all exploring all of the different brushes. So then I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to choose a different brush for each square and that's going to help me work through completing this lizard a little bit more systematically. We're now going to have a look at importing palettes. So if you choose the colour selector in the top right hand corner and then choose palettes and then the plus sign, you would then select new from photo and you're able to go into your photos and choose a colour palette from any existing photograph. So if you were to save a photo of a lizard to your camera roll, you could then import all of those colours into Procreate and that would help you to choose all of these kind of lizardy colours or whichever colour theme that you're going for. So each time I go back up to the colour choices, I have all of these colours from my lizard photograph pre-saved so I don't have to keep looking for new colours each and every time. So this could create a new palette for whatever drawing that you like. So say you've chosen some colours that you really like and you don't want to lose them, you can add them to a new palette and they'll stay saved in the program for you. So now I've completed my lizard with all of the textures, I'm going to start to annotate it. So annotate it just means to add notes, um, giving an explanation or a comment. So our explanation is going to be what materials we could use in real life to create these textures. So we've had some suggestions at the start of this video. So you could have cut paper, milk carton, magazine, fabric, tissue paper. Try to be as imaginative as possible. So there's additional suggestions on the video at the moment. So I've got lentils, dots of glue, paint, all sorts of things. So whatever you think you could easily get your hands on to create these textures, write it next to the texture that you've drawn. So the next type of texture that we'd be experimenting with is the textures of a bird. So this is similar to what we would do if we were in class. So we have got paper bags, magazines, plastic, fabric. We've also got foam and real feathers. So we should have this image of a bird on a satchel one or teams, whichever your teacher is using. We're going to save that to our gallery and import it. So same as last time, we renamed the layers and put the texture layer underneath so that we can always see the outline of the bird. So we're going to start to fill in the bird with as many different textures as possible. So I'm just doing this freehand like I started my lizard last time. I've also not imported a palette for this one because I couldn't really find a bird that I liked particularly. So I've just gone for all kind of pastel shades instead. If you enjoyed working systematically with the grid like on your lizard then feel free to add the grid again. So if you were to do that you would just go to the spanner, canvas and then add drawing guide.
I know it can be quite tricky to think of lots of different textures just off the top of your head. So on the screen at the moment, there's lots of different texture words to help you with that. So first of all, we've got bristly, coarse, corrugated or embossed. Now on this next one, we've got gritty, jagged, fringed, rough, soft and abrasive. So think about what each one of these would look like and would they apply to a bird? Could you apply them somewhere on this image? And on this next one, we have got fluffy, hairy, shiny and glossy. And I think probably the fluffy and hairy is going to be definitely a texture you're going to try and convey. Now that I've finished my bird, I'm going to start to annotate it. So that just means I'm going to make notes about what materials I could use in real life. So I've chosen a black pen and I'm starting to write each different type of material that I could use. So, so far I've got feathers, I've got layers of string or thread. We could use strips of paper or try the fringing technique, which I know lots of us have tried so far. So here we have our finished bird, complete with textures and annotations. And now just to recap on what we need to do this week. So task one is to create a page filled with 12 textures. Task two is to fill a lizard with textures and annotate it. And task three is the same except with a bird. You'll know if you've been successful in this task, if you were able to import these images to Procreate, you were able to create new layers, add grids to your canvas, use a range of brushes that show a range of textures for a lizard and a bird, and if you've annotated your drawings with potential physical materials, and finally you were able to export your image to either your emails, Satchel One or your photo gallery.